anatomy of the ear. The ear is divided into three separate parts. The first is the external or outer ear. The outer ear is the outer fleshy and cartilaginous auricle that surrounds the auditory canal. Next is the middle ear, which is also known as the tympanic cavity. The middle ear contains a tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum. The middle ear also contains three auditory ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The malleus attaches at three points of the eardrum. The incus attaches the malleus to the stapes. The stapes attaches its base to the oval window. Next is the inner or internal ear. Within the inner ear lies the cochlea. The cochlea is formed against bone, also known as bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth encloses the membranous labyrinth involving in hearing and balance. Within the cochlea, there is a cochlear duct. The cochlear duct contains endolymph. Endolymph is a fluid with electrolyte concentration that differs from typical body fluids. Surrounding endolymph is perilymph. Perilymph is a liquid that resembles cerebrospinal fluid. Anteriorly from the cochlear duct lies a basilar membrane. On top of the basilar membrane are hair cells that are activated by sound waves. Above the hair cells lies a sectorial membrane. Attached to the cochlea is the vestibulocochlear nerve, which contains the vestibular branch and the cochlear branch used for balance, equilibrium, and hearing. The hearing process. Step 1. Sound transduction of the ear begins with sound waves that can come from anything, a pencil falling, a radio, and phone calls. The sound waves enter the external acoustic medius and travel to the tympanic membrane. Step 2. The sound waves then cause the tympanic membrane to vibrate. The vibration of the tympanic membrane leads to the movement of the auditory ossicles, which amplifies the sound. Step 3. Movement of the auditory ossicles causes pressure waves of perilymph within the cochlea. Step 4. The pressure waves of perilymph distorts the basilar membrane, thus creating a nerve impulse. The Physiology of Nerve Impulse The tectorial membrane, hair cell, auditory nerve, basilar membrane, and stereocilia all take part in a nerve impulse. Step 1. When the basilar membrane vibrates due to the pressure movement from perilymph, stereocilia open. After the stereocilia open, potassium ions begin to enter the hair cell. Potassium ions are positive electric charged ions. Step 2. The potassium ions then cause a rapid depolarization of the entire hair cell. Depolarization is a change of permeability. Step 3. The rapid depolarization opens voltage-gated calcium ion channels. Calcium ions then begin to enter the hair cell. Step 4. The calcium ions then trigger the release of the neurotransmitters within the hair cell by attaching to the neurotransmitter. Step 5. The neurotransmitters then exit by exocytosis. Exocytosis is a form of transportation by a vesicle and then taken out through opening in the cell membrane. After the neurotransmitters exit, calcium then returns to the hair cell. Step 6. The neurotransmitters then cause a nerve impulse in the auditory nerve. Now returning to sound transduction of the ear, Step 5. During step 5, the nerve impulse originating in the basilar membrane travels through the cochlea to the vestibulocochlear nerve. The vestibulocochlear nerve carries the impulse to the brain where the impulse is then analyzed and then sound is recognized, creating sound transduction of the ear.